Hey everybody, I have returned. I was on tour playing drums for a band for a little while and uh, everybody started progressively getting sick one by one. A really bad cold too and uh, and I was totally cool. And then three days after I got home and started going David Goggins on myself because I had gained weight <laughs> over tour, um, my body was like, guess what dickhead? Nope. And then I got uh, really sick. So uh, I'm still sick. It's It's been like three weeks and just been hanging on there. If you can't hear it a little bit, um, it's still there. And it's been messing with my voice and stuff. And it's it's hard to do things like this because if somebody's never seen any of my videos and then they hear me singing and it's like, <laughs> um, that's not a good thing. So anyway, <clears throat> we're going to do it anyway. And this is something I was talking about on Patreon. Always trying to keep up with uh, those folks as I um, you know, continue to appreciate their support. And um, it's really great to be making things after 15, 16 years and, and have people supporting me and, uh, and helping me to live my life and, and you know, all that kind of shit. So thank you to those people. Anyway, um, this is something I was talking about on there. <clears throat> I'm going to go a little bit more, more in depth. And uh, it's just something that so many people don't get down and they don't think about and they are not conscious enough of. So let me reiterate some things I've said before in that singing, if you're able to think about it like a breathing exercise, it will help you tremendously because in a way that's basically what it is. It's a controlled breathing exercise. And um, the more you can think about it like taking breath in, in the right place, in the diaphragm, taking breath in, and then a controlled passage out, and then taking breath in. I know that, you know, stupid, stupid people would be like, oh, yeah, it's like uh, talking to or whatever fucking people want to say. But uh, in this case, it's taking breath in. Uh, I've made this connection before, but it's kind of like bagpipes. We're filling up the bag, and then we're pressing down on that bag so that we can sing our notes through, and then we're filling up the... Uh, uh, we don't do that when we speak. Ah, uh, so that's what we're trying to get into. And the thing I want to talk about too, which is in the title, is called the launching pad. So this is something. Uh, once again, um, I'm not a trained singer. I've never uh, had any lessons, but I've been teaching people for about 11 to 12 years. So the things that I come up with are things that I inherently kind of find out through my own drive and ambition, and, and uh, what I learn from doing this and practicing all the time, and uh, throwing my voice in for loops, and you know all those kinds of things. So this is something uh, I've developed, which I like to have students do or be conscious of all the time called the launching pad. What the fudge does that mean? It means that you should be engaged all the time in some way, shape or form, even if it's just resting on the diaphragm. But as we continue to understand our connection to the diaphragm, we should be launching each thing from each note, each word from that place each time at the beginning of a passage or the beginning of uh, whatever you're getting ready to sing. Similar to if I go back to the bagpipe thing, we're breathing into the bag, which that's how bagpipes work as far as I know. Um, I ain't never played no bagpipes. We fill up the bag, then we're resting down on it. <laughs> we're making those sometimes horrific sounds. <clears throat> so the, uh, let's get into this. And then we're going to apply this to a song. Um, I always have trouble thinking of songs too because people are like, what songs should I be singing? And it's like, uh, you know, you should be applying this to everything that keeps you engaged. And one more thing before I continue, saying that, same with guitar and learning drums and everything, like, I can give you things that you can learn, but this stuff is so intrinsically connected to your obsessive, compulsive, want to play, want to sing, want to do that, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that it kind of needs to be more your decision and what you want to do and what is exciting to you, because it's definitely not that exciting to every day, every week, be like, I gotta sing that song and I should be practicing my scales and whatever. Um, that stuff can tire you out and then you just start going like, I don't know, dude, it makes it into a drag and uh, don't be a drag, man. So, okay, the launching pad. I've talked plenty of times about breathing, and diaphragmatic support and placement as well. But um, to quickly reiterate, and if you need more information on those things, please do check out my channel and find those videos. You know, what does support feel like? I think was one of the first videos I did. But uh, as you already know, we need to start accessing our breath from here, 
meaning that we should be filling up the bottom of the lungs, you should be feeling your stomach expand, and you should be relaxing the upper chest and the upper shoulders. If you feel yourself, think about this in terms of a launching pad. If you start paying attention to yourself when you're trying to sing something, and you notice yourself each time going like this, or watch some of your favorite singers, see if they do that. It happens a lot, <clears throat> especially when people are nervous and they're running around on stage or whatever, they're going like this. That is where they're launching from. That means that right before they get ready to launch into whatever they're singing, they're setting themselves up with this musculature to start pushing it back out of their head. <laughs> so that means that they're taking a breath in up here. They're probably going to, maybe they're engaged in some way, shape, or form with a little bit of the diaphragm, but you're setting yourself up incorrectly and poorly to utilize your diaphragm and these muscles down here if you're already up here and then you're going to push from there. Ah, and you're going to go like this. That's very similar to what we do when we're speaking, most people at least. We're breathing up here, ah, and then we're speaking from right here. <coughs> so um, we're going to be taking a breath down here. Now, as anybody that's had a panic disorder or anxiety, um, maybe you went to a therapist and they taught you, hey, man, learn to breathe from the diaphragm and shut the fuck up for a second. <sighs> We all need to come up with ways to practice doing this. Uh, once again, I could give you ways to practice doing this. I already have given people many ways to practice doing this. But you need to come up with your own. I found out that since I'm a runner, um, I can breathe diaphragmatically the whole time. And I'm reminding myself and conscious of that very, very much the entire time I'm exercising. If you do Pilates or yoga or walk your dogs <clears throat> or carrot cat ferret or cat or maybe you have a rabbit and he's hopping along or maybe you have a carrot that you drag on a rope be conscious of your breathing if you're not conscious of this breathing you're not going to create a muscle memory habit out of it and then you will continue to struggle with certain things at least at the end of the day come up with some kind of a way to practice it when you're singing and be conscious of it am i breathing right oh no i wasn't Am I breathing right? Oh, no, I wasn't. <clears throat> so breathing down here. Now, uh, hopefully you know by now a little bit about engaging the diaphragm. It is a push down feeling, not a tightening of the abs. Uh, we will have some of that happening in different ways, shapes, or forms. But remember, if I tighten the abs, nothing's happening right now. If I push down into the diaphragm, Ah, I'm getting much louder, and that's because I'm engaging from here. I'm driving the voice from right here. Therein lies the launching pad idea. So now, put that into one note at a time. <clears throat> if you need to, I've done this plenty of times, give yourself a forcible exhale <sighs> down here like somebody punches you in the stomach lightly <laughs> or pushes on your stomach. Imagine that you're filling up the stomach... <sighs> And then somebody goes <laughs> and pushes your stomach in like this, <laughs> or coughing or laughing. <coughs> That's what diaphragmatic support is there for, to push air out of the lungs. So imagining that, I completely lost my train of thought. That was too many things. We're engaging. <laughs> we're pushing down. We're connecting to the diaphragm. Now we're going to do one note at a time. I got back there. Um, fem I'll go low enough for most males. Try to do it uh, low enough so that uh, females can go an octave above, but just like this. Like I said, we can put an H in front of it, a forcible exhale, if we need to, to keep getting this. I think I started off that minor, so it was going to be a very sad lesson. Now let's start thinking about this as we process it and as we do this. As you can tell, each time taking the breath in, if you want to purse your lips like that so you can really start to feel that downward push I'm talking about before it, that's another way of setting yourself up to remind yourself and be conscious. Each time thinking about this, being conscious of it, same thing without the minor sad notes. So taking a breath in. See the breathing exercise thing I'm talking about? This is exactly what singing should feel like. Now let me 
me throw one more fun concept at you. The more round and the more you make for a kind of yawned, open, round space in here, think of this like an arena that all this resonance can bounce around in. If I go, uh, I'm kind of nice and open and relaxed, but let's open it a little bit more. As you get better at turning your body into an instrument and experience this kind of launching pad, this whole thing, the more you'll start to understand what actual singing really feels like, and the more you'll kind of lust after that feeling and that sensation more so than this speaky, like, well, the road rolls out like a welcome mat. You know, so many people kind of, they get so mentally caught up in like, is my voice good and everything? And then they come to somebody like me and I'm like, it's okay, you're not really singing. Like there's barely any singing going on. And all those thoughts and the ego and the emotion and the, the fear and the vulnerability. So getting to know your body as an instrument and utilizing it like an instrument is a totally different feeling. And it's really great and I suggest you do it. So the hell am I talking about again? So, oh, roundness. So let's open up a little bit more. What does that mean? That means that we're taking this space, we're focusing on that right now, and we're going to yawn a little bit so we can open up. Think opera, think possibly musical theater. Ah! Hope that's not too loud. Ah! Now my vibrato, not to keep veering off in different directions here, but all these different things come up. My vibrato there is happening as a matter of just the relaxation response of having an open throat and having no jaw tension and stuff, and then pushing down into the diaphragm. Um, I don't always have a perfect vibrato, but when I do exercises like this, I'm always like, oh, wow, that's that's lovely to hear and feel. I'm not forcing it. I'm not going, ah, and going, mm -mm, or anything like that. There are different ways to produce bravado, vibrato, but the most natural, real, actual way is by uh, pushing down into the diaphragm and having the sound want to oscillate and warble like this. It's a relaxation thing. So, <laughs> a couple notes here, and then we'll go back down, and then we're going to move into applying this to a song, because that's what most people want to know anyway, right? <coughs> Pardon me for coughing. <clears throat> Same thing. Where am I? attention one more time how each time I'm setting myself up to do this exact thing this launching pad I'm launching from the same pot spot I'm replicating this motion each time lovely okay now not to be cliche everybody usually finds me because of sounding like Chris Cornell a little bit or something um, and singing some of that stuff, and then people are like, you like grunge music, we like the same thing, we're the same person, we should hang out. Um, <clears throat> I'm not really that person, I do like a lot of those things, and Chris Cornell's voice is, is great to always bring up and instruct with, because he covers so many bases, and he did so many things well and beautifully, and uh, seemed like a lovely person. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't want to just be like, let's just always sing Chris Cornell stuff. But anyway, in this case, like I said, I don't want to keep sitting here trying to think about songs that everybody likes and everybody should. So if we just do like, I am the highway, um, I'm not completely sure what the notes are coming out of the gate, but the great thing about some of these songs that are longer like that, that have not longer in terms of its duration, but the passages have longer notes, like, uh, legato is essentially what I'm trying to say. Meaning it's not pearls and swine bereft of me. It's pearls and swine bereft. You get to sing through it. So if you're trying to practice these principles or practice your <gasps> launching pad, you'll get to a place where you understand the longer, kind of more ballad the song is, the more it has these legato, long, drawn-out notes, the more you get to set yourself up and then sing through these notes and actually feel this kind of feeling of singing instead of some kind of version of you know short staccato bah, 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 speaking kind of thing kind of thing <clears throat> you can tell my brains are still not completely wired correctly and i know i look tired and you know it is it is what it is for right now uh, it is what it is okay so um 
Mm. Let's say the first note's that. Pearls and swine. <clears throat> Um, we get into enunciation. The next video I make, we're going to talk about enunciation. We're going to talk about enunciation through mixed voice because I know this confuses a lot of people. Uh, before I do this, one more thing. I want to add to this that um, I mention sometimes that I never had a vocal lesson so that people will understand a, a couple things about singing. One of those is that if you do these things enough, your body is the teacher. Your body will continue to teach you. And I'm not trying to say that to sound like, you know, like... Your body will teach you and you will learn. Um, I'm trying to say that um, your body in terms of tension, release, uh, wearing yourself out, blowing your voice out, getting hoarse, all this kind of stuff, every week, every month, performing, studio, it's going to keep teaching you what's working and what's not. And in this case, enunciation especially... It's going to teach you when your jaw is engaged and when things are happening, what kind of feels like it's not going to last, what feels like it's running you out of stamina, what feels like you, there's longevity in it. So when we say the word pearls, pearls, that is not a fun word to sing. So we lighten up the enunciation across the board with all these things, not just because we're trying to sound like Cornell, but because we're pushing, we're launching, and we're finding that singy, open feeling and space then we're putting the words through that. If you have to lighten up even more on your enunciation to experience that feeling, do so. The enunciation is going to happen lightly in the front of the face here. We're trying to keep everything else relatively relaxed and loose. Pearls. Ready? Pearls. So right out of the gate, launch from here, set yourself up from here. And when I keep saying launch, right here under the sternum is where the diaphragm starts. That's where we're trying to find a little bit of that launching from. Pools and swine be rammed of me. Perfectly, you could see me right there. Of me. You can even hear it. If you actually listen to yourself, you'll, can, you can tell the difference between uh, singing and breathing up here. This isn't just because I'm sick either. Breathing your, with your diaphragm is quieter, so I can actually hear people breathing incorrectly when they sing, just because you can hear kind of more of a gaspy, asthmatic kind of thing. Well, one more time. Pearls and swine be rift of me. Now, another great teacher here is that if you're having trouble with this, you want to learn it even better, you want to get better at it, go louder, go harder, or go home. Go harder, and then it'll, once again, it's a self-correcting thing. You're going to feel where tension lies and where it's not working. Pearls and swine be rammed of me. So you could hear more of a vibrato. Everything was exactly the same, except that I was pushing down further from here. So you might have seen me kind of go like this a little bit further. Uh, let's do the next line. Long and weary my road has been. Long and weary my road has been. So weary. Another one that wants to get in the jaw. Weary, weary. So let's think about it in terms of A. I know I'm getting into enunciation here, but it helps with the, the everything else we're doing. Weary. There's barely any R in there. There's barely any, barely any E in there or any kind of weary, weary. So there's just mostly like an A vowel that I'm wrapping a little bit of enunciation around at the end of that. Long and weary my road has been. <clears throat> you starting to get how this works? Uh, uh, we can go into the, the pre-chorus. And then I know the, the part everybody wants to know is the chorus. But, you know, that's going to throw people because it gets high. I'll talk about it for a second. But then I'll tap out there. Um, and we'll get, like I said, we'll get into more of that stuff. Adding, you know, support to mixed voice and adding enunciation to mixed voice and stuff too. Later in another video. Hopefully when I'm well. <laughs> but I was lost in the city, city, alone in the hills. No sorrow, pity, for leaving 
can I feel, yeah. Now I'm adding some color on there, but hopefully you're kind of able to follow along. Let's jump into the chorus anyway. I don't know what key I'm in. Uh, I think it's a little bit higher than this, so let's go higher. I am not your rolling wheels. I am the highway. You should be hearing almost exactly the same things across the board, <clears throat> except for that crap. I am not your carpet ride. I am the sky. Now I'm going a little fast because this is starting to feel like a video where you're just watching somebody sing. But try this on your own. Keep yourself nice and open. Think about your placement being up on the top. Ah, and try this to varying degrees. Remember, again, one of the most important things I can offer to you or try to instill in your mind as a vocal teacher person is to be conscious of these subtleties. Be conscious of what the body's doing. Be conscious of what you're doing. Um, in this case, remember, we're trying to turn the body into an instrument and experience what that feels like. Once you do that, and once you continue to do that, everything else, I swear, will start to get easier. Um, you'll start to shed some of the habits because you'll realize they don't serve you anymore, and it just feels better singing like this. It feels more like an instrument. It feels more like you're clicking a switch, flicking, clicking, whatever. Flicking a switch and saying, I'm speaking right now, I'm singing right now. Speaking right now, I'm singing right now. And you're able to kind of engage some of these things. So, um, <clears throat> wish me luck on my recovery. I'm not going to go David Goggins on myself quite yet again, but I'm going to shed some weight and just get ripped as fuck. <laughs> okay, thanks everybody.